Welcome to the HIV podcast. Each week we focus on a person, historical event or pop culture moment linked to HIV and explore the story of what actually happened. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jess. And between us, we've been working in the field of HIV for 40 years. Our aim is to get as many people as possible HIV educated. Just before this week's episode, we've got some exciting news. Our first giveaway. Jess, what are we giving away? Those lovely people at Passante have kindly given us a variety pack of 50 condoms to give away. They've given us a Passante lubricant bundle, which includes gentle light, mint and strawberry, and an Insti HIV self-test to give away this HIV testing week. Ooh, and how do people get hold of these goodies? What they need to be doing is following us and Passante on Instagram and then sharing the image about the giveaway on their own Instagram story. Okay, when's the deadline for entering? So you can enter from the 6th of February until the 10th of February when it closes. You have to be UK based and over 16 to enter. Can I enter? No, conflict of interest. Excellent. Thank you, Presente. Welcome to the HME podcast. Hello. I got in there super fast today. It's not a competition. Oh, I, I thought that's what we were doing. No, if it was, I would win, obviously, but no, it's not. <laughs> like I've already won everything. How are you? How has your week been? Very good. Oh, we had a good week last week, didn't we? Oh, with the hamper. Hamper of dreams. Yeah, that I was included in. Was that better or worse than the handcrafted one he sent you at Christmas, personally? (laughs) Right, to clear it up once and for all, he didn't send me anything at Christmas. Didn't send you anything either. And now I think we just made him feel so awful that he sent us all a team hamper. Cream tea hamper, it was delicious. It was lovely. We should probably mention for anyone that's never listened before and just going, who are they even talking about? A little backstory, really fast for you. Sean, our boss, someone asked us who his favourite was. Sarah said it was her and made up that he had sent her a handcrafted hamper at Christmas. He, in fact, had not. I actually believed her at the time because I'm very gullible. (laughs) But he actually hadn't. But this week, I think we just banged on about it so much on the podcast that he had finally sent us. We were in the office at the drop-in. Um, and a cream tea hamper turned up and it was lovely. I can imagine him sitting at home, listening to the podcast and just going, enough. I'm going to put an end to this shenanigans. He said, president now, though. Where are we going next, Sean? What's next? Oh. <laughs> we do not want any more gifts. We're very happy. <laughs> but in less nice news, wow, TikTok's the Wild West, isn't it, Sarah? You see, it's a bit of an unknown quantity to me. I don't go on it that often. I'm much more comfortable with Instagram and Facebook. And what I've seen of it through our TikTok page, do you call it a page? I don't know. Profile. Profile. People don't hold back with their comments, do they? I was quite shocked. So we always say we're very open to feedback, positive or negative, and that's very true. But TikTok is just quite hateful. It's, It's sort of beyond like negative feedback. It's just like, here's some of my opinions. Let me fire them at you in a really angry way. And I don't really know any context of what you're doing, but I want you to know my opinions. Yeah, I just found that quite a lot. I mean, some people might have seen that I shared on our Instagram stories because I was all flustered, Sarah, I have to tell you. (laughs) There's not like you at all, is it? And now I had to turn the comments off in the end, which normally I wouldn't do. But it was, it was, I was literally sat at home watching this unfold going, oh no, 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 I can't deal with this. And also some of it was directed at Jamie. It was from the Jamie Brickhouse episode. And I really didn't like that, which is why I turned the comments off. I thought, I don't want our podcast to be responsible for somebody else receiving hateful and hurtful comments. So that was another reason. But I mean, like you said, next time I'll just leave them on and just watch it unfold. Well, I was going to say, oh, any conversation is a good conversation, but that one definitely wasn't. But I think it highlights how much education is still needed. People really aren't understanding you equals you in particular, I don't think. And also, you know, we do say that we welcome all, all comments, positive or negative. I'd rather people, even if it's unpleasant, voice their opinions and we can go some way to try and changing their opinions. I don't think that it's always going to work. I think that's a bit kind of fanciful really, isn't it? To think, oh, well, if someone messages us and says, no, everyone with HIV is awful, that by having a conversation with us, we're going to change their opinion. I don't think that's probably going to happen, but it's a start. And I think Jimbo's joining in here, Sarah. He has He's got strong on. opinions, is not he? Doesn't he just? He also has strong opinions about the skip being dropped off over the road. So uh, my okay. apologies. 
I think where it's hard is if someone's not even paying attention to the literal context of what you're saying, deciding their own meaning, (laughs) just going bonkers. I mean, it shows us how much stigma there still is. We talk about it all the time. And if anyone was in ever any doubt, head on over to TikTok. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love TikTok. It's probably my favorite social media platform. Absolutely love it. But yeah, that was that was a lot for me. But yeah, we just wanted to mention that because that was crazy. It was been a busy old week. And next week is busier, isn't it? Or this week. I never know when the episodes go out because I pay no attention to you ever. <laughs> so they go out on a Friday, sir. Oh, yeah. Pings up on my phone. And she's like, yes, I know. Yes. I've done it. Here we are again on a Friday. That is, it's the best way to start the weekend with us. Who wouldn't want to spend the weekend? Spend the weekend with us? I've gone too far. Let's move on. <laughs> um, yeah, it's testing week. So it starts on Monday the 6th and it goes through until the 12th. And so obviously this podcast goes out on Friday. The next one will go out next Friday. So it'll be kind of at the tail end of testing week. But in the meantime, if you've got any events you'd like to share or any news around testing week or just any news generally, just tag us in your posts and we'll share it on our stories. Oh, fabulous. So I was about to say on with the show. What are we doing? Oh, what are we doing? So it's the last episode in our blackmail series. Okay. This week we are going to look at what happens when someone uses HIV to blackmail someone else. So they're basically using it as an extortion method, which is really, it is very rare, but I don't think you can look at blackmail without looking at all of the different angles. I think we said this last time, didn't we? There are so many levels to blackmail that you don't really realise. So we're going back 1995. This is bonkers in my opinion, but 1995, and we're looking at initially a man called Frank Riolfo. Hope I've said his name correctly. He claimed that he had AIDS. Um, In fact, I don't think they ever proved whether he had HIV or not, but he used this claim to try and extort money out of Tesco, and it resulted in him being sent to prison. Oh, okay, go on, go on. Oh, and Tesco is a big supermarket for anyone outside of the UK. I don't know how far flung Tesco goes. No, (laughs) No, I don't either. So what he did is he threatened to contaminate food unless the store gave him money via club cards. So Tesco operate um, a scheme where you become, I think you become a club card member, you build up points or you get discounts by shopping with them. It's like a loyalty card, really, isn't it? And Tesco back then had been trialing these cards at selected stores. What Riolfo wanted them to do was issue him with a card pre-programmed via the magnetic strip on the back with a bank account that they would deposit money into and then he would access the money via a cash point. I mean, wouldn't you pick somewhere a bit smaller than Tesco? I mean, as we go through this, I think there are many flaws in his plan, if I'm honest. There's better ways that we can do this. I don't want to brag that I've got a criminal mind, but as I was looking at his case, I was just like, no, no, you've gone wrong here, here and here. I love it. You can now add criminal mastermind to the ever-growing list of, <laughs> of your accolades. Yes, I can. So what happened on the 13th of January, 1995, the store manager of the Kettering branch received a call from a man who called himself St Mary Ann. You can pick any name at all. And he went with, for like a criminal name, he went with St Mary Ann. Did he live really near a St Mary Ann church or something? I feel like that's a giveaway. I feel like we might find him through that. Okay, sorry, go on. I was just so shocked that that would be his criminal mastermind name. Yes. Yes. So he's called himself St. Mary Ann, and he said he'd contaminated food at the store, at the Kettering store, staff checked, and frozen peas and prawns, two of my favourite foods, by the way, had been injected with black ink. That is not the contamination I was expecting, if I'm honest. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know why I thought he might stick his penis in a bag of peas, but... (laughs) It was not squirting king cons and stuff. And what would that even do? I suppose he's leaving a message, isn't he? He's like warning them. If he's sticking his if he's sticking his penis in the bag of frozen peas, he's going to get arrested, isn't he? Well, I should think he'd get arrested for squirting black ink everywhere. Ah, uh, well, he followed up with a blackmail demand to Tesco's head office, and he said, "As you know by now, the food was contaminated with pen ink." but it could so easily have been a toxic substance. I am fully prepared to extend my actions unless my demands are met. 
this is this is probably the best episode we've done in ages because you are blowing my mind slightly. Right, his demands related to PIN numbers for these loyalty cards. He'd already got the loyalty cards and he said to them, put coded entries in the personal announcements of the Times and he told them what to write. So one of them, for example, said, thanks for a wonderful time last night. Ring me, love Mick. And then a code underneath. Ooh. Presumably to look like a phone number, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, this is very old school, isn't it? It's really like, you know, in the personal ads, putting your messages in it. Oh, it's a bit desperately seeking Susan. Very much so, yes. But, do you know, I mean, Tesco weren't having any of it. So Rielfo kind of upped his game a bit and injected frozen meat in their Dudley store and deliberately left behind the syringe. Mm-hmm. And then... He sent more letters to Tesco and he's threatening to tell the national press what he's doing, saying, look, I've got AIDS, so I have a ready-made supply of infected blood. I mean, I don't mean to cast aspersions, but who comes up with this? Well, I know. Well, I know exactly who does come up with things like this. I feel like there are easier criminal ways to, to make money. It is bizarre. What did Tesco do in response? They caved in. Are you joking? No. On February the 27th, Tesco opened a Barclays bank account, deposited £25,000 into it. He also requested they launch a big club card promotion at his local store in Dudley. And they did. They did all of it. Were they getting advice from the police or anything? It doesn't say. He's kind of said, well, I've got infected blood. They've just panicked, I think, and just gone, oh, gosh, OK, well, we better better get on this then. Well, we better we better succumb to our blackmailers' demands. I mean, oh, Tesco, what were you thinking? And why did he just target Tesco? I would have gone M&S. Oh, yeah, but I wouldn't have asked for money. I'd have just asked for food. Literally what I'm thinking. Like, put some, put some pork pies in as well. Oh, no. That's the saddest thing ever. Your blackmail demand is just some pork pies, please. I, the saddest thing about that is I'm now vegetarian, so I couldn't even eat them. You have the pastry, I'll have the pork. <laughs> That's actually a deal. The worst bit was the pork and the gelatin. Best bit is the pastry. Oh, yeah, I don't want the jelly stuff. That's awful. That ruins a pork pie for me. Okay, so so he's asked them to also launch this club club promotion, presumably to make it more difficult for them to spot him using this card that's loaded with 25 grand. 25 anyway. grand? Yeah. They gave him £25,000 and that's in, what do you say, 95 as well? Yeah. So that is a hell of a lot of money. That's right, Grandad, it is. I assumed he'd just be like, oh, give us 500 quid, give us a grand. But I did not realise Tesco caved in for 25k. Yeah, they did. Now, he didn't go to the promotion himself. He sent his wife. And while she's there, she picks up a club card of her own. I don't know if she's in on it at this point or not so she picks up her own club card and she gives her real name and address the couple then went on a spending spree across the midlands withdrawing money from cash points so they're using their tesco club card it's been programmed at the magnetic strip has been programmed so they can access this 25 grand that is in this bank account and then using the card as well when they go shopping to build up points to get further discounts <laughs> i love that they want them but just forget the points guys Forget the points. You don't need the points. You've got 25K. Don't worry about the points. You don't need to worry about those discounts. And the police obviously are on the case. They didn't have to work too hard to track them down because, you know, she'd given their actual address. She is the worst sidekick ever, isn't she? She is the most terrible accomplice to having a crime. Yes. So the couple were picked up. Where do you think they were picked up? I'm going to say in Tesco, literally trying to get some more points or something ridiculous. No, they were picked up in Slough. One of our centres is in Slough, which is why to us, we're like, no. Whereabouts do we know? At a cash point, of course. Of course, of course. This was in April 1995. So they picked up at this cash point. They'd spent by this point about £7,500. I mean, if someone put twenty five grand in my bank account, it would be gone by the next day. What would you spend it on, Sarah? I think I'd get a car, I'd get loads of new clothes, I'd do a massive food shop at M&S. There is a lot. You are so active. I couldn't fit that much into a day. Really? Oh, yeah. Maybe one of those things. Two are to push because you added food in. So I'd pick one. It's either the car or the, or the clothes and then some food. But I couldn't know. Well, do you know, I might just pay off some of my mortgage. That's quite dull, though, isn't it? 
It's less of like the jazzy, you know, fast cars and, you know, stolen money lifestyle. Just going, let's pay my mortgage. I mean, it's sensible, but. I'd take out a life insurance policy, Jess, probably, or top up my pension. (laughs) A fun filled life. I live. Yep. I like that's what you think about when you think about crime. You're like, oh, I could uh, get a bigger pension there. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Anyway, all of this goes to show that if you mention HIV or AIDS to a big company like Tesco's, they panic. Now, we should point out that we do not recommend anyone uses their positive status to this effect. That's not what we're saying at all. I mean, if Tesco had done their research and been HIV educated, they would have known that a syringe of infected blood that's injected into a bag of frozen peas or meat is not an HIV threat because the virus cannot live outside of the bloodstream. Frozen peas. One odd thing to like inject a substance into a bag of frozen peas. I know, it is very odd, isn't it? I'd have gone for like yogurt. Oh. Yeah, because it's, it's going to have peas dramatic. there. You can see, you can see the ink in there or whatever he's injecting. Do they have a see-through bag? Mine do. Do yours mm-hmm. not have a see mm-hmm. Oh, this is the top level content, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, look, let's move on. Do you know, I do think if Rialfo had been positive, I mean, he had very little knowledge, didn't he, about his own HIV status. But you know what? He got six years in prison for this. So he had plenty of time to educate himself about HIV. That is quite the quite the stunt, isn't it? But like you're saying, I remember when I was young working in shops and people would use it as this kind of, not as extortion, but shoplifters would come in and hold a needle and say, they had AIDS and like basically you just had to let them take clothes and all the security guards would just be like just let them where were you working in shops that this happened on a regular basis in Eastbourne (laughs) wow yeah yeah I work I don't well we can name names because we're not advertising worked in Burton's happened a lot in Burton's really yeah like that happened to me I worked in boots as my Saturday job and they only I was going to say fun thing. It really wasn't fun. But the only thing that broke the monotony was um, someone phoned up with their bomb threat. And I answered the phone. <gasps> they don't train you for stuff like that. So I was just like, oh, can you hold on, please? I'd like to get the manager. And they just went, no, there's a bomb in your shop and hung up. What did you do? I went and found the manager. <laughs> I'm so sorry to disturb you. <laughs> Someone's just said there's a bomb in our shop. <laughs> to think you just ran out like it was on those enormous boot stores and we, people could just hear you coming like ah! <laughs> you, you ran outside <laughs> oh, that's quite exciting but they don't train you on how to deal with things like this they're oh, more no. interested in can you work the till properly and good customer service yeah they didn't really train you up in east one either i remember once a shoplifter came in and literally just had arms full of clothes and was walking out the door and i just sort of happened to see it out the corner of my eye and I just sort of said oh excuse me I wasn't even being rude they turned around and I went all right f off threw the clothes at me and I was just stood there like dripping in like jeans chinos and t-shirts just like oh, me <laughs> so aggressive <laughs> good that he thought you were going to take him out just like you must have had like your game face on like no this does not happen in this shop I mean, there are more cases. So I looked at, there was a study done a few years ago, looking at the role of biological toxins and bioweapon threats in the 21st century. That is my bedtime reading now because it's fascinating. (laughs) And they um, have included, they said there's 15 cases where HIV had been used as a weapon. A lot of them concern supermarkets. I don't know, a supermarket's like an easy target. They must be. Well, maybe everyone heard the rumour that Tesco had paid out, Sarah. Became easy pickings. Ooh, that's a good point. I mean, I've picked out a few. Most of them are UK based as well, but they all follow the same sort of theme. So if we go back, so take May 1989, for example, someone called Robin Smith sent letters to five companies, uh, including Safeway, Littlewoods, Procter & Gamble and Vidal Sassoon, threatening to contaminate products with HIV in bl- infected blood. And he signed the letters from the bogeyman. The bogeyman would do much worse things than just threaten to put HIV in shampoo. Not even that you can actually do that. But, you know, I feel like that's a a, a bit of a big accolade. Do you know what I mean? In terms of what he was actually trying to do. The bogeyman. <laughs> I mean, he got caught. He made a phone call to one of the companies. Please trace the number. He got five years in prison. Again, terrible criminal. 
Exactly. September 92, an unknown extortionist signed his letters as the Terminator. He was threatening Budgins, the supermarket what? chain. I don't think Budgins are around anymore. Yeah, they are. Oh, are they? There's one <laughs> they mean. No, I'm, I'm an M&S food person. I wouldn't go to Budgins. I can tell with your see-through bags of peas. They're the expensive ones, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so he was going to contaminate their products unless they paid £300,000. In one third letter he mailed, which was sent to the Daily Mirror, he claimed he'd placed HIV contaminated projects in nine of the store's shops. They never identified him and he never got the money. So what was the point? So the Terminator is still out there somewhere. He is out there. Maybe he's listening to this podcast. Maybe he's going to come after us because we laughed at him a bit. Bring it on. That's what I say. Right, stand for this silliness, Jess. Obviously, you'll deal with it because you know I don't do manual work. This is, this is all on you. just oversee it. Yes, and yeah, I'm more strategy and thinking. You're oh, delivering. Yeah. yeah, 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 like an assistant. Well, PA. I think we agreed, didn't we? <laughs> okay, so in January 1994, two men attempted to extort 12 million pounds from three supermarkets: Safeway, Sainsbury's, and Tesco. So they're slightly different because they're saying that they want the money as a tax to help small businesses. And they're saying, if you don't pay us this money, we're going to contaminate foods that were purchased and eaten by customers without further cooking. Sandwiches, yogurts, as you See, suggested. I told you, packet of crisps, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, you were. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They said there are a small number of our members who have tested HIV positive. We have a supply of infected fluid whenever, and we can deliver this to the produce in your store. They called themselves Action in the Community, and they didn't just use HIV. They also had access to bacteria and chemicals. Oh, crikey. They sound quite menacing. This is like proper, proper gang, isn't it? Mm. So the police posed as supermarket executives, and they negotiated a ransom. They paid over £475,000 and then immediately afterwards arrested the two of them. One got five years, one got eight years. I've never heard about people using HIV in this way. I never realised any of this happened. We've got one more for the UK. That's Barry Dixon. He wanted £100,000 from Sainsbury's, again, threatening to contaminate the food. He wrote to Sainsbury's in November 1995 and he said, don't tell the police. If this goes to the papers, it would read, AIDS and HIV, everyone's favourite ingredient. That was Sainsbury's slogan at the time. Quite funny. Oh, well, on two counts. First of all, don't tell the police like anyone's going to listen to you. And secondly, yeah, I've changed your slogan for you. And he sent two syringes filled with blood as well, but they proved to come from a pig. He was sentenced to four years in prison. So don't mess around with these people, which is good. Where did he get blood from? I don't know. Maybe he's. Maybe that was another crime. Maybe he found a pig farm and... Where would you even start trying to get blood from a pig? Or would you just like wring some pork chops out? Could you get pig's blood from that? Oh. I mean, it's not a no. pretty task, is it? But No. Anyway, we'll move on. So not just the UK, uh, Canada's got its fair share of crackers people too. So we have got two from them. One is in March 96. So this is kind of moving forward now we're well out of the 80s an animal rights group sent razor blades they alleged were covered with hiv infected blood to fur retailers with the message fur is dead and hopefully so are you although oh no they didn't have much faith in their own threat because the letter also said if you don't shut down your business in six months we'll send you an explosive device that will kill you oh well it seems why did they send the other thing then why did they send the razor blades if they were going to follow it up with a counter threat i know and give them six months. That's Very quite nice though, isn't it? We'll give you enough time to wind things up, lay everyone off, you know. Don't just be firing your staff, give them a good package, and then we'll blow you up. The other one was um, August 99, a bank robber brandished a syringe filled with red liquid at bank staff. He was, I think he was politer actually than the animal rights group because he apparently said to the bank staff, excuse me, sir, I really hate to do this, but I've got AIDS. And this is a syringe with AIDS tainted blood. Never says whether they caught him or not, but how polite was he? I was going to say he's the most polite that we've just talked about. No, I think the people that gave them six months were probably the most polite, but I do enjoy his, his, his manners. Yes. I think what we can learn from this is that Canadian blackmailers have more manners than the British ones. 
Well done, Canada. Indeed. And we should point out extortion isn't just related to HIV. So there are lots of difficult uh, difficult medical conditions, different medical conditions, <laughs> hepatitis, rabies, that are used as threats as well. <laughs> <laughs> sit from my drink as Sarah was talking and I, I was I was I'm having to hold the microphone with one hand today it's normally on a stand I don't have that today so I picked the bottle up with my other hand and my my finger <laughs> snapped off of the bottle on my nose <laughs> in the <middle laughs> Sarah's sentence which was quite painful <laughs> oh no <laughs> also quite funny are you all right do you need a comfort break uh, right, what were we saying? Uh, not just HIV related, lots of different medical conditions, hepatitis, rabies, etc. Who knew any of those were used as threats? I just thought it was things like, you know, chemical weapons and all of that. And do you remember when the whole anthrax thing was and it was being sent out in the post? I remember all of those things, but I didn't hmm. realise it. things like this, like viruses would be used. No, I mean, I genuinely thought I'd found just one single case with Riolfo. And then all of these came about and I was like, oh, this is more common than we thought. So there you go. Always learning. Aren't we? And I'm just fascinated why in the UK we're so fixated with blackmailing supermarkets. I, if I was going to blackmail anyone, I think it would be energy companies. I mean, they have a lot of money. Maybe you shouldn't give out your criminal mastermind plans. I'm not going to do it. Good. We've got too much on today. Anyway, there we are. Not all blackmail cases are focused on someone's status. Some people like to threaten organisations with HIV infected blood. There are no recent cases that I can find. So I wonder if U equals U has put a stop to all this. You'd hope so. And you'd hope that people getting more HIV educated as well, hopefully. Yes, maybe that's it. Maybe people have wised up to this and are like, no, if you take blood out of the bloodstream, it's not going to be a danger to us. But there you go. That concludes our blackmail series. What a wild ride. Very much so. Just did, I just can't believe it's been used in that many different ways. I still just can't get over old St. Mary Ann's. Can't get over him in the beginning in Tesco. Oh, <laughs> send his wife in, not briefing her. Innocently gives over her name and address and they managed to track <laughs> him that way. Amazing. In other news, I've got a little ridge in my nose now where I snapped the bottle. <laughs> oh, my me. goodness. Just wait until you're right in the middle of telling me something and then smacked myself in the face with it. It's impressive. Well, we've finished Black Man now. What a good series. Love a mini series. I hope we've got some more coming up this year. I think we will have. It's like everything, isn't it? It's going to grow and grow. But And we only ever give a kind of snapshot. So there's always more. What's happening next week if we're not doing Black Man, Sarah? Okay, so next week we are looking at the narrative around HIV and whether it needs to change. I, I, can I answer that for you? It'd be a really short podcast. Yes. There we go. Okay, that's next week's episode concluded. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting discussion. I look forward to joining you with that. And don't forget, everyone, as I said at the start, obviously it's testing week from Monday. So yeah, do tag us in anything you'd like us to share on stories, any events or anything. Um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you. We're not seeing anyone. We we don't even hear them, do we? I don't know why I'm saying any of that. I don't know where you're going with this. I can't help you out. You've, you've gone rogue. <laughs> I've ruined it. You have. That smack on the nose is just giving you all sorts of issues. Thanks for listening to the HIV podcast. If you enjoyed our podcast, please like, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can now also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at the HIV podcast for behind the scenes insights and videos. 